the new Civic hatchback has switched to an all-new global platform shared with its U.S. market saloon and coupe derivatives. It is significantly larger than before and is now a whisker under 4.5 meters in length, with a 2.7 meters wheelbase that becomes the longest in the European C segment. Two-thirds of the engine lineup is new. There are two downsized turbocharged of tech petrols ranging from 1.0 to 1.5 liters and 127 bhp to 180 bhp. The 118 bhp 1.6 liter ride tech diesel, which is due to join the Civic range six months after launch, is the only combustive carryover. The Civic is wider and lower than its predecessor, too. Its body in white is both 16 kg lighter than that of the last Civic and 52% more torsionally rigid, and the car's center of gravity is 10 mm lower. Most of which sounds like good news. And yet, to lower the floor, roof line and center of gravity sufficiently, to better locate its driver at the center of its driving experience spatially, and to create the necessary cabin space to rival the leading European hatchback set. Honda has reverted to sitting the fuel tank in the conventional place, just ahead of the rear axle, and jettisoned those ingenious magic rear seats. This will be greatly regretted by pottery collectors, cello players and downhill mountain bikers all over the UK. A more upmarket cabin ambience and a more engaging drive are the gains offered up as payback for the Civic's relocation towards the notional five-door mainstream the latter facilitated by independent rear suspension on all versions of the car and new four-stage adaptive damper fitted to upper-level sport-badged models. And it was with a short test drive in a 180bhp 1.5-liter tech turbo sport that Honda allowed us an early taste of exactly what has been gained. The oversized grille, air intakes and lights, meanwhile, are fairly transparent attempts to disguise the car's bulk and decorate what's a relatively unimaginative shape compared with what Civic customers will be used to. It may be true that the Civic's styling has, for a decade now, put certain buyers off, but you wouldn't bet that this new version, although smart enough looking, will definitely do the opposite. The biggest change inside is the driving position. Moving the fuel tank has allowed Honda to lower the driver's hip point by 35 mm, so you feel much less perched up at the wheel than in the outgoing Civic and you have more headroom. But the layout of the dashboard has significantly altered, too. Gone are the old car's split-level instruments and driver-focused asymmetrical fascia, and in comes an architecture that's a little more expensive to the touch and space-efficient, albeit much more ordinary on the eye. The rev counter and speedo are on a color TFT screen, which is flanked by stylized digital temperature and fuel gauges. But counted together, they lend the interior only a superficial air of technical sophistication that Honda's new 7.0 in touchscreen infotainment system attempts, but ultimately struggles, to build on. Material quality is high almost everywhere. But the cabin's sense of perceived quality isn't so cleverly conjured as it is in an Audi A3 or Volkswagen Golf. The Civic has a soft touch roll top dashboard pad, but its plastics are otherwise mostly hard. Although its switch gear feels very solid and robust, the Civic's button consoles aren't as skillfully arranged as they could be and don't look or feel as designed or expensive as an A3's.